Uh, hello everyone. Before this video starts, I have a very important message to deliver. Um, a little while back, I posted a video about the game uh, Ring of Elysium, where my friend Jake and I played a few matches and talked about how much we liked the game. However, it has recently been brought to my attention that Ring of Elysium is a Trojan horse for malware. Basically, a large number of Steam reviews describe how their computer uh, was acting slow soon after installing Ring of Elysium, and some even claim that it completely corrupted their OS and they had to factory reset their computer. Uh, it turns out that the developers have a very shady history with things akin to this, so I'm happy this was brought to my attention before anything major happened. Uh, I didn't think something like Ring of Elysium could be hiding a bug, but it was honestly, it honestly was a good idea. Imagine you're an individual who firmly believes in capitalism and wants to inflate the absolute fuck out of the market by mining Bitcoin because free money totally won't fuck the economy. You put actual effort into a game that is easy to access and based around a currently popular genre, free to play. No microtransactions, battle royale. Hide your mining bug encrypted deep in the files and pay to get it onto Steam. Of course, though, the devs using a bug to mine Bitcoin off of their would-be consumers is just my theory of why they did this. So don't don't take that specific statement as fact. The developers are slimy, disgusting, money-grabbing wastes of oxygen who I personally believe don't care about the long-term damage of Bitcoin and what it can do to the economy, but I, I have to commend them for their way they managed to spread the bug. I'm using my most popular series to send out a public service announcement saying, do not, under any circumstances, download Ring of Elysium. Free to play battle royale game with no in app purchases that's more enjoyable than both other large name options. I guess that further drives home the old saying of if it seems too good to be true, it probably isn't. With that behind, uh, thank you for listening. Please share this video with the timestamp of my PSA to help spread this message and stop Tencent from doing any more damage. Enjoy the video, consider liking it if you do, and I will talk to you all later. Hey what's up pups, it's JR and welcome back to some more BTD. Happy October! As a man who loves bats and cool weather and is basically nocturnal, Halloween is my favorite holiday, and thusly, October is my favorite season. Of course, I love celebrating seasons, so my Korra has gotten a bit of a makeover. Now, as per usual, I've got a few things to get out of the way before we get into the video itself. First off, I would really quick like to apologize for this video coming so late. Um, my sleep schedule was absolutely fuckered and I had to do something about it. So that's why last week pretty much nothing happened. Second off, this video is supposed to be a video dedicated to a melee weapon, but I instead have another secondary to show you all, which I will justify as we move on to the actual video. Now the reason I have a secondary for today is I have, out of sheer chance, discovered my new favorite weapon in the entire game. Next to hate. As I mentioned in my Spectre video, as a Master Rank 21, I have used a great deal of weapons, but not everything, purely because I don't care about Master Rank. I see it as a side effect of trying out new gear. A few of the weapons I have tried out, but didn't like, include Nell and Dual Toxic Assist. Dual Toxic Assist in particular can go fuck itself. I have unveiled seven different ribbons for it, and not once was I happy about it even after I gave it a shot with a ribbon. These two specifically have one thing in common. They both have situational buffs. I have never been a fan of situational buffs and the like. If I were to be able to get buffed or heal in some way, I would prefer to be able to just do it. 
basically what I'm saying is I would enjoy both of these weapons much more if they just worked the way they did out of the box and I didn't have to worry about headshotting someone to keep my buff going. And for this reason, I avoid other weapons that also have situational buffs. Because of the bad taste they both left in my mouth, I figured I wouldn't like any of them. However, once I got a ribbon for our weapon today, I was presented with a dilemma. It was a weapon with a situational buff, so I was already iffy about it, but I never gave it a fair shot. It was also a part of a specific weapon collection, along with two other weapons. A hammer I love, and a shotgun I absolutely hate. So with it being a sit buff weapon that I never actually tried, and me having a mixed history with its two companion weapons, there was no other way to know if I would like it unless I tried it. It was then I discovered the ever so enjoyable power of Arca Cisco. Arca Cisco is a scoped corpus laser pistol that can be obtained through the energy lab in your clan's dojo. Looks like I've accidentally given this season of BTD a theme of corpus energy lab weapons, huh? Arca Cisco is clearly part of the Arca weapon family, along with the oh so fun shock hammer Arca Titron and the ever-so-bullshit, annoying meta shotgun Arca Plasmor. Arca Cisco comes with 60 base damage favoring Puncture, a 26% status chance, and an 18% crit chance with a 1.6x crit damage. This makes it a pretty good hybrid crit status weapon, but it could be better if that crit damage was a bit higher. 2.0 maybe. However, it being a sit buff weapon, its stats don't end there. Arca Cisco has the target analysis sit buff, which increases Arca Cisco's status and crit chance by 4% after mods. Each stack of this buff lasts 2 seconds, so with a full 5 stacks, you have 10 seconds to act before your buff completely runs out, which then, you just have to hit one shot, and then you reset the counter for that stack. Then you just gotta hit more shots, and you're good to go. The cool thing about this is, if you have a lot of multi-shot on your Arca Cisco, each individual shot that comes out of your gun and hits its mark counts as its own individual hit. So if your Arca Cisco shoots three projectiles and all three of them hit, you immediately have three stacks to your buff. And this good amount of multi-shot can be pretty easily achieved with Arca Cisco's three-star ribbon disposition. I absolutely love this weapon. I didn't think I would for the reasons I gave before, but after building it and putting on my ribbon, I enjoyed it maybe a bit too much. The reason I like it so much might be bleed off from my love of the laser pistol from Fallout 3 in New Vegas specifically. Cisco's sounds, style of the lasers that are fired, and general rapid fire style of the weapon are very akin to the laser pistol, so the familiarity helped to make me like this weapon much more than I most likely would have. However, Arca Cisco is a scoped pistol, and that most likely will turn a lot of people, including myself, away from actually giving the weapon a fair shot. Good thing I got rather lucky with my ribbon, huh? Huh. Arca Cisco Hexa Acadra increases its crit damage by 76.8%, its status chance by 81.8%, and its fire rate by 63.6%, while reducing its zoom levels by 57.6%. This not only means that I proc more often my crits hit harder, but on the second zoom level of Arca Cisco, it zooms in by a magnification of 1.7x, so it just zooms in a tad more than a normal pistol. Thusly, making Cisco much more usable in everyday scenarios. This ribbon makes it much more enjoyable overall, mainly because it adds more fire rate, and I love high fire rate weapons, so Cisco became a fast favorite of mine, and I highly recommend it to everyone looking for a fun but effective weapon. Now, on to my build. I have Barreled Fusion, Lethal Torrent, Hornet Strike, Convulsion, and Pathogen Rounds increasing my overall damage and adding Corrosive damage to the mix. Then, um... A-S-H-A. -A. Asha? Asha. Then I have Asha and Prime Pistol Gambit increasing my Cisco status chance, crit chance, and crit damage, as well as increasing my fire rate even more. Finally, I have Seeker, adding 2.1 meters of punch through for fast buff stacking and enhanced crowd control. With this 5 former build and my ribbon specifically, after 5 successful hits, Cisco gets up to 4,258 average overall damage and 42,584 average DPS. So let's see what Arca Cisco can do.
That'll wrap up this episode of Built to Destroy. If you enjoyed this video, consider dropping a like and make sure to hit that subscribe button to become a pop if you haven't already. Also, if you want to support me and the channel, consider becoming a patron for as little as $1 a month or maybe even buy some merch. My name's JR and I'll see you guys in the next one.